Okay, so in this short video, we're going to show you how to actually build a tag in Alarm Manager. Now, again, if you haven't seen my video about talking about the requirements for using Alarm Manager, I suggest using that or going back and, and viewing that because, again, you may be trying to use it and you don't have the ability to use it. So this does require an L8 processor. Um, with that said, we do have an L8 processor in our chassis down here. This is a Control Logics platform. I am using version 33. That's just the con environment to explain right now. That it, uh, as far as the requirements, um, I believe 31 or above will allow this feature to, to be used. So um, with this said, I have an alarm right here, just a basic um, alarm. And let's just go ahead and change this to, just, let's just say uh, standard, let's just call this a, a standard bit. Just so we can clear that, clear the air to see, you know, does it require or does it need to be the named an alarm? It does not need to be named an alarm. Although the this test bit right here, I am that that's something I have in place to test the alarm. But right here, if you go to the bit that you're trying to use and you right click it on an L8 processor, and again version 31 or above, I believe, um, when it comes out, and don't hold me to that, but I believe that is when it got introduced. Um, this is version 33, so just uh, keep that in mind. You have the ability to come in here and add the alarm, right? So I'm gonna add the alarm, and then the current input is right here. So that's the bit that it's going to be referencing for this alarm. Now we can call this alarm one, our alarm condition one, uh, whatever whatever you really want to name that right uh, now the condition down here with the next stage so keep in mind to, for those that are, are familiar with alarming too uh, this looks very similar to an ALMD right um, there are going to be some differences so please don't you know just skip through this video or nothing like that there are going to be some differences in the ALMD and the uh, alarm manager alarm and why I prefer still an ALMD, I will go ahead and address that. So to keep in mind the trip right here, you can put, um, you can if it's an analog value, you can put a high, high, a high, a low, low, low. Uh, in this case, it's just a standard Boolean bit. Uh, so this is going to be a trip and we can change the expression from a one to a zero. If we want to alarm on a zero, like say if a bit was held true, and if it ever dropped, it would alarm. We could do that as well. So this does give you a lot of uh, flexibility to use any tag in your program. Although I will say, make sure you name your tags properly and make sure you don't go mix and matching things because the person behind you is going to have a hard time trying to find things like that. But just, this does give you the flexibility to hold a bit low or high. And if it just dropped down low, you can change it like that. Now we do have that ability in ALMD as well, so um, just keep that in mind. You do have an on and off delay, but I will, I will kind of go ahead and say don't use that feature unless you really are in a heavy process or something like that because it's already going to be delayed. Okay, you can change your severity just like you would in an ALMD. So uh, meaning if you want it from zero to or from one to one, uh, a thousand. Uh, a thousand being the highest severity. Um, you can put your message in here. We'll just call this alarm message for our simple example. And you also could actually put in tags associated with that. Associated tags, again, would be just like you would anything else in ALMD. You would add it just like that. In our case, we're gonna use a simple message. We're not gonna use any tags associated with that or nothing like that. Um, you can use uh, the use and elevate the alarm. Um, we're going to leave that unchecked right now. Uh, we're going to come in now. <clears throat> keep in mind the alarm summary does work, or the alarm manager does work with the Factory Talk View Studio uh, alarm summary. Now this is uh, so, well, when it comes down to it, it's going to be a site edition, right? So now you can use that in many different forms, but it's going to be the alarm summary that you're going to be using it, using that for, and that comes into where you would be using a class. So. If you've seen my videos on that, you would see and understand that the, there is a way to segment your alarms in Factory Talk, and that's that's per the class. Okay, so we're just going to put an alarm um, in there for that, 
And then the next thing I want you to understand too is you do have the ability to put in a factory talk command if you want to put in a factory talk command to have the alarm go to a said function or do something for that matter. Uh, above and beyond, we're not gonna get into that right now. The one thing that I do want to draw your attention to is the evaluation period. The evaluation period is uh, basically half a second. So that's 500 milliseconds. With that said, that means no matter when this bit is triggered, when this alarm is triggered, it is not going to issue that command to the actual HMI or to your monitoring system until the it's been evaluated in that 500 milliseconds. Now, again, that's based upon the, the timing of the processor and stuff like that. So there is no real timestamp on that besides that when it gets put on, when it gets evaluated. Now that evaluation time again is 500 milliseconds and currently it's not changeable. That is subject to change in future versions because that is a limitation that I feel uh, if you're trying to, in most applications, you're going to, or most machinery that you program or you're working on, you want to have, when your alarm happens, you want to have exactly when it happened. So you have a timestamp of when it happened. The ALMD on the counter side to that does have that ability. So there is no 500 milliseconds delay on that ALMD. Um, although with this feature, there is. So with that said, we'll go ahead and put that there. Now we can always come in here to our alarms and our alarm manager and edit the alarm. So you see the standard tag right here. If I wanted to change that tag, if I wanted to come over here and change the trigger, I can change the trigger to that. Um, I do believe I renamed it, so we're not gonna actually do anything with that. We'll just keep it standard bit for right now. Um, but you do have the ability to edit that. Um, just keep in mind uh, how to use that. Um, and then you have definitions and stuff like that. Well, but the key components I would say when you're looking, if you're trying to, to decide, should I use Alarm Manager or should I use an ALMD? Now keep in mind, ALMDs and ALMAs, um, it, which are up here, right, have been around for quite some time. Uh, the ALM, ALMD and the ALMA, which ALMD is the digital, ALMA is the analog version. Um, they've been around for quite some time and are tried and true and are time stamped to the actual controller level so the, the timing of the controller. So if you were to go into the controller properties and you were looking date and time, it would match the date and time of when it, that's when the timestamp would happen. When the, if, when this bit right here was triggered and it would activate, as soon as it came into in alarm, it would put that timestamp in there. So that would be, there's no delay in that whatsoever. Now, the difference in, in the uh, alarm manager and the ALMD, I will say, is that ALMDs and ALMAs eat up a lot of memory inside of your processor. Now with the L8 processor, you are uh, probably not worried about the memory so much unless you have a really, really, really huge program. But again, when it comes down to it, they do eat up a lot of memory and they are memory intensive. But when it comes to having a machine that is very detailed and gives you the alarm at the proper precise timing that you need, then an ALMD is preferred in my opinion. Now, when it comes down to it, you can use the, a, um, the alarm manager, but just keep in mind, you are gonna have a buffer in there of 500 milliseconds. With that said, I just wanted to make a video showing how to use that, some different things that you need to understand as far as the alarm manager because again there are limitations on that and if you're looking to be really detail oriented in your programming and again timing is everything with machinery so with if you want the time time stamp the proper time stamp of the alarm you need to go with the alma or alma or almd if you're looking just for an alarm and you don't really care about the timing of it um then you, you you're saying okay well 500 i'm fine with 500 milliseconds delay then you can go ahead and use that but just keep in mind when alarm happens generally there's going to be a, a four or five or six alarms happen with it because when a machine shuts down there's not just one alarm there's going to be several alarms and that's just the, the way the natural organism works of programming right so 
if you have all of them being evaluated, you really don't know what's first, right? You do probably have, I mean, there's there's probably a creative way to program that, but don't, don't get me wrong. When it comes down to it, the logic behind it, you should not have to program logic to, to specially work that for a 500 milliseconds uh, delay when you can come back and use an ALMD and actually solve the problem a lot easier. Now there are some things to understand about the, again, when it comes to ALM, ALMDs and ALMAs, but I did want to make a short video on how to actually set up the actual alarm manager and have that functionality there. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.